Okay, this is going to be a down and dirty video, really quick, how to get um, WinVice to connect to a Commodore 64 BBS over Telnet. Um, there's been a little bit of change as to uh, which versions of uh, TCP server, or TCP server, however you want to call it, uh, are floating around several different compiled versions. So, uh, first things first, let's pretend you're starting with nothing. You're going to have three things. You're going to have the WinVice emulator, you're going to have the TCP sir, or, or the TCP to Telnet converter, and you're going to have a terminal program for the Commodore. Uh, in this case, we're going to use uh, CCGMS Ultimate. So, those three things are what you need to start from zero. So, follow this uh, tutorial and you'll be online pretty quickly. First thing you want to do, we're going to pretend like Google is your friend. So, just go WinVice Download. Uh, and, and to save you some time, the links are going to be in the description of this video. So, uh, you want to go straight to the source, go to download, find binaries for Windows. So just click on the Windows downloads and then go find the latest, uh, it's like version 3 point, what, what, 3 now? Yeah, who, who knows? Uh, I particularly like uh, 3.1, that's the version I've been using and that's the version I'm going to be testing it with uh, on this particular load. So go ahead and depending on your version of uh, or your uh, platform, get either the 64-bit uh, version or the 32-bit uh, version. Uh, I'm going to go with 64 because that's what I commonly run. Download it uh, pretty much anywhere. Just remember where you put it. I'm putting mine in a temp folder for Vice, brand new folder I've created for the purpose of this tutorial. Um, open, show in folder. And this is just a quick and easy way to get this done. All right. Uh, right click it. I recommend having 7-zip. If you don't have it, you can use uh, WinRAR or WinZip or whatever you like. But 7-zip is my favorite. It's my go-to app. Uh, so just right click it, 7-zip, extract here. Already comes into, in its own little folder there. So in here has everything that you need in order to get uh, WinVice uh, started. So there we go. All right, now we're, we're going to come back to that later. Okay, so let's go back and let us get uh, TCP, sir. And you're going to get that directly from my... Uh, website or, or excuse me from my uh, storage container so just grab that link save it same place uh, same deal right click 7-zip extract here if you want you can put it into its own little folder These three files call out TCP sir and this DLL file that comes with it. Put it right in that folder. There you go. Now what this what this uh, file does right here, it just issues the commands for you. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Uh, it basically calls the program, sets the baud rate to 38400, uh, uses a standard virtual port of 25232. You can set it to whatever you want uh, if you already have other instances running has a inbound port of 6400. This is not really needed. If you're not going to be receiving calls, you can strike that completely, uh, but it opens that port by default anyway, so I just left it in here. Then it issues this modem command, this Hayes compliant modem command for higher speed modems. What this does is it turns on echo. It allows you to see what you're typing whenever you uh, type the AT commands. Uh, it has uh, the verbose commands to where it says, okay, or error, or depending on what it is that the modem is trying to tell you, instead of just giving you numbers. Uh, and it sets the uh, uh, dial tone detection to uh, uh, auto. 
Uh, that could be either X1 or X4. It doesn't really matter for the purpose of calling out. Um, only receiving calls does it make a big deal. Um, the other main things to point out here is we have set the DTC to positive, uh, the uh, RTS to positive, and we have turned on flow control. The logging level is set to only four. You don't need anything more than that unless you're running a BBS. And we have inverted the carrier for uh, inbound. And uh, I honestly can't remember what those do. I, I, it, I wrote it down somewhere. And it, for the point of this tutor tutorial, I don't care. So there's that. And you simply double click on the batch file to start the modem. So now the modem, quote unquote, is running. It's actually ready to go. And it is running on the virtual port of 25232. And the inbound port, which we don't care about, is 6400. Unless, of course, you're uh, receiving uh, calls. All right, so now let's jump back to our last thing on the list, which is to go and get the CG, CCGMS Ultimate. So, uh, it's just a really quick and easy terminal. There's other term programs to use, but for the purpose of calling 40 column Commodore boards, this is the go-to program, CCGMS, and eh, we'll say just for the sake of argument, 2019, download. All right, there's the 2018 version, there's the 2019 version. Just uh, grab the uh, D64 file. You can get it in cartridge form uh, if you want. I just, I tend to go directly for disk images, makes it easier. Uh, we'll just download that right at the same old spot. And what I like to do whenever I'm making um, new WinVice deployments is I create a little folder uh, outside of the WinVice folder uh, just called uh, uh, IEC or IEC root whatever basically you can call it anything but this is just where I put all my disk images so I can categorize them uh, makes it a little bit easier to find all right so we're just going to drag that D64 file right into there now we're going to go in and launch uh, WinVice we're going to launch X64, which is the Commodore 64 emulator. Uh, now, I've already got some default settings on here, so just to make sure we catch up to where you are, I'm going to set all default settings so that we start on the same level playing ground. Uh, you can adjust the size of uh, the window to however you want. Um, one thing you're going to notice when you start typing and you, and you reach for the quotes, I was like, oh, that's not where quotes is because quote on the Commodore is shift two. Uh, so what you want to do to make this more Commodore-like is to go to settings, uh, keyboard settings, wherever the hell they put that on this version. Ah, there it is. Uh, change symbolic to positional. So that way when you type shift two, you actually get the quote. So. Now, why do you suppose we've got an error? Because we don't have any drives attached. That's right, boys and girls. So let's go ahead and set a 1541 drive for device eight. So go into settings, drive settings, and then select uh, drive eight as uh, 1541 or 1541 doesn't really matter. Uh, or actually 1571, they all read D64 images. We're gonna go with 1541 because that's the uh, newer uh, ROM style without the head rattle glitch in this version. So, we've selected our drive, now we have to insert our disk. So go to File, Attach Disk Image, Drive 8, and we're going to find our folder that we put everything in, which is Incoming, Vice, and we put our uh, D64 file into this IEC root folder, and then CCGMS Ultimate. When you single click on the file, it's going to give you a quick overview as to what's in the directory. So attach. Now we can go back and get a directory of that disk. Uh, one key that you'll want to learn how to get quick with is uh, uh, Alt W. What that does is uh, um, it turns on warp mode. If you don't have uh, 
the Jiffy DOS ROM loaded, or if you don't have the fast load cartridge loaded, or any kind of other super CPU or, or helper programs for WinVice or for the C64, you're going to want to get used to using warp mode because waiting on this program to load will take you a good long while. Alright, so there's our folder contents, there's our CCGMS Ultimate. Uh, so we're just going to uh, load the first program on the disk, which Anybody who's ever used a Commodore before knows it's load star comma eight comma one. Now this is where we're going to turn on warp mode. Uh, Alt W is the key. We'll just kind of hurry that along. There we go. Warp mode off. And run the program. Okay, so over here in the background we see our uh, uh, little modem here. And oops, one thing we forgot to do is set the port. That's why when you type AT, nothing happens. All right, so let's go to settings, RS-232 settings, and RS-232 settings again, and check the uh, first device here. You can use uh, one, two, three, or four, but if you've never used it before, you don't have other multiple apps running, just uh, use this one. So we're going to change the address to 127.0.0.1 colon 252.32, which is the port we're using here. 127.001 is basically the nice fancy way of saying localhost or connecting to your own computer. So hit OK. And now we're going to tell uh, this WinVi simulator that we want to use the cartridge port instead of the user port. So we're going to go to settings. RS-232 settings, uh, ACIA settings, which is the cartridge port and not the user port where you would normally plug a modem into, we're going to be simulating a SwiftLink cartridge or a G-Labs 232 Turbo. Uh, so click ACIA settings, check the box to enable, and remember the page from before where we set the address. We're going to set device 1 or device 2 if that's where you set it. Uh, we're going to change the uh, ACIA mode to SwiftLink and hit OK. That's not entirely necessary, but it helps uh, with the uh, flow control issues. Uh, make sure the uh, interrupt is set to NMI and hit OK. Now we have to tell CCGMS, the term program, which uh, uh, pro or which uh, modem to use. What you do is you press the F7 key to get to that menu, press M until this gets to SwiftLink and Turbo, and then press the B key until the baud rate reaches 38400. So now press Enter. So now when you start typing a T, you actually see something and it acts like you really have a modem. So uh, that's how we're going to be rolling. So now we're ready to connect to BBS. Goody goody. So just type uh, ATDT and find whatever BBS that you want. Um, the best place to find BBSs is the C64 BBS Outpost. Uh, BBS Outpost is the Google term that most people use. Should be the first one Commodore BBS Outpost. And it's got, uh, like, right now, 68 active boards. So, all right, we're just going to pick the first board at the uh, that comes up in the list, which is amazingly enough, 13th floor BBS. Wow, I wonder how that happened. Oh, and here's a cool little thing. Uh, if you copy an address, you can paste it into WinVice simply by right clicking. And don't forget that uh, you need the colon 6400. You are now actually connected to the outside world. CCGMS does ASCII and CG. It does not do 80 column because it's obviously a, six, a C64. If you want something in 80 column, you can use uh, DesTerm or perhaps uh, NovaTerm, you know, something like that for the 128. Or there's a NovaTerm for the C64 that has a 80 column font. 
Doesn't look that great. I would recommend if you want to experience a true Commodore in full 80 column CG mode, you use a Commodore 128 emulator. Uh, when Vice does it just fine uh, and load up uh, um, uh, Desterm 128 or something similar. Um, so how you connect to BBSs at this point is uh, entirely up to you. Uh, which boards you call, also entirely up to you. Uh, once you're online in this manner, you can go practically anywhere. Uh, it's actually kind of fun even to uh, connect to uh, Linux machines via Telnet using a Commodore 64. That's always fun. I uh, uh, hope that was easy enough for everybody to follow. Um, remember to save your settings in OneVice as your default settings. Um, and I'll have some tutorials later on how you can uh, create a uh, portable version of, uh, of this to where you can take it on the road with you, transfer it to your laptop, or even use it on your Android and stuff like that. So, uh, catch you next time.